look at some practicing balancing equations. Our first equation that we have, we have aluminum plus uh, iron three oxide and it produces aluminum oxide and iron. Okay, remember to balance equations we need the same number of each element on each side. So to start off with, we're going to write down the elements that are involved in the chemical reaction. We have aluminum, we have iron, and we have oxygen. Next step is going to write down how many we have on the reactants and how many we have on the products. So here we're just looking at their subscripts. So aluminum has a subscript of one, so we have one aluminum. And then iron has a subscript of two, so we have two irons. And then oxygen has a subscript of three, so we have three oxygens. Now on the product side, we see that we have two aluminums, because it has a subscript of two, three oxygens, and one iron. So in this reaction, we see that what's not balanced, we don't have the aluminum or the iron to balance. So to go ahead and balance these guys, all we have to do is we put a 2, and that 2 is a coefficient. The coefficient will distribute to all of the subscripts in the formula. And guys, remember, don't cross over that plus sign. It just goes to the aluminum. So that 2 distributes to that 1, which changes aluminum now to a 2. Now we need to balance our irons. So we have two irons here. We need two over there. The subscript of iron is 1, so we put a 2 right here. That 2 distributes, and now we have two irons. So now here would be our balanced chemical equation. One thing I will point out, if the formula does not have a coefficient, like here an iron 3 oxide, it's an understood one as our coefficient. So if it's asking us for the coefficient of iron 3 oxide, it would just be one. Or the aluminum here, it would be two. Okay guys, moving on to our next problem. Here we see we have magnesium nitrate and it's reacting with potassium hydroxide and it produces magnesium hydroxide and potassium nitrate. Now, remember in our balancing, we write down everything that we have in our reactants and our products. We have magnesium, we have nitrate, and the reason why I'm keeping nitrate as NO3 instead of breaking up into nitrogen and oxygen is because I can see nitrate on both sides. So I'm gonna keep it as one thing because it'll keep my balancing a little simpler. Then I have potassium, and then I can see hydroxide on both sides so therefore I keep it just OH. Okay now we'll write down how many we have of each in our reactants. We see that we have one magnesium because it has a subscript of one. We have two of our nitrates. We have one potassium and we have one hydroxide. And guys on polyatomics what you can think just think there's a parentheses and a one out here if they don't put it. Now in our product side we see that we have one magnesium again. We have two hydroxides this time. We have one potassium, and we only have one nitrate. Okay, so to go ahead and balance these guys, what we can do, um, we can start with our nitrate because it's just on top, and we need two in our products. So it remember it's a co uh, polyatomic, so it just has a subscript of one when we put in those parentheses. So to bring that nitrate to a two, we put a two right there, which would take our potassium to a two, and it would take our nitrate to a two, which that's good, because now nitrate's balanced, but now potassium's not. So to balance potassium, it has a subscript of one. We put a two right here, and that distributes to potassium, and it distributes to hydroxide, so potassium would go to a two, and hydroxide would go to a two, which would now make it balanced. And this would be our balanced chemical equation. Okay, guys, our next problem. Here we have lithium, solid lithium, reacting with hydrochloric acid to produce hydrogen gas and lithium chloride. Okay, so here, again, we start off, write down what we have. We have lithium, we have hydrogen, and we have chlorine. Next, we're going to go ahead and move on to writing down how many of each we have. In the reactants, we have one lithium, one hydrogen, and one chlorine. And in our products, we see that we have two hydrogens, one lithium and one chlorine. So what's not balanced is the hydrogens on the reactant side. So we're going to go ahead and put a two coefficient here, which will distribute to their subscripts. And we see that we get a two for the hydrogen, and that makes it balanced. But now we have a two for our chlorine. Okay, so chlorine's not balanced now, so we have to come over to the other side, and we would have to put a two coefficient in front of lithium chloride which would distribute to both of them, so lithium would now go to a two, and our chlorine would now go to a two. 
Okay, which now the only thing we have left to balance is our lithium. So we put a two in front of the lithium to distribute to its subscripts, and we would get a two. And we see that everything is now balanced. All right, guys, go ahead and balance this last reaction. Uh, here, breaking it up into what we have, uh, starting off, we have aluminum. And then we see that here we have hydroxide. We really can't see hydroxide on the other side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to break this up into hydrogen and oxygen. And then here we see that we already have our hydrogen. So last thing we have is sulfate. And I put sulfate because I can see sulfate on both sides. So I just write down the polyatomic. Okay, on our aluminum, we see it has a subscript of one, so therefore it's one. Uh, for our oxygen, we see that that three is going to distribute to the, co or the subscripts in here. So it's three times one, which gives us three oxygens. And then three hydrogens plus the two we already have, which gives us five hydrogens. And then we have one SO4, or one sulfate. In our products, we see that we get two aluminums. We have three sulfates. And we have two hydrogens and one oxygen. Okay, so we're going to save the hydrogen and oxygen for last. And we're going to start by balancing out our um, aluminums. We can start with aluminums or we can start with our sulfates. But let's start with aluminum. It's on top. So I'm going to put a 2 right here, which distributes out to uh, the aluminum, which gives us 2. But it also distributes to the oxygen and hydrogen. And guys, you can kind of think of this um, if you rewrite it. So if you're kind of confused, because we distributed the 3, and then we have to multiply it by the 2. If it gets too confusing, just go ALO3H3, and then just erase it when we're done. Because you see here, that 2 is going to distribute out. So it's 2 times 3, which gives us 6. Um, oxygens and then it gives us two times three six hydrogen plus the two we already have so it goes to eight okay so now we see that our aluminums are balanced our sulfates not balanced so let's go ahead and balance that guy we have three right here we have one right there so we'll put a three we see that, that three will distribute to the hydrogen which will give us six more hydrogen plus the six that we already have over here so it can give us a total of twelve and then it'll distribute to the sulfate and give us three. So, oh, sorry, we have 12 hydrogens. We have six oxygens. Okay, so I'll just write that in another color so we can see it. So the only thing that's not balanced are hydrogen or oxygen. So now we can come back over here and balance that out. Um, we know that we need 12 hydrogens, so six times two is 12. So I'll put a six right there. And that will distribute out to the hydrogen and to the oxygen, which will give me 12 and it will give me six, which this will be my balanced equation.